Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over Snell's Law and how we're going to use Snell's Law to calculate angle of incidence, angle of refraction, and also our indices of, uh, of refraction for either of the materials on either side of our boundary. Okay, and Snell's Law was named after a Dutch astronomer whose name is Willebrod Snellius, and he lived from 1580 to 1626. And I just think he has a cool name, Snellius, and that's where Snell's Law comes from. We can thank him for that. Okay, this is Snell's law. It's the ratio of the sine of the two angles is equal to the ratio of the two indices of refraction, and that can also be equal to, or that is also equal to, the velocity of light in either of the materials. And um, usually when we have Snell's law, I like to think of the light, the side that the light ray is coming in from as the incident side, and I know I have to keep V1, N1, and theta1 together. And then the other side is the refracted side, of course, and that's V2, N2, and theta2. Now, typically when we use Snell's law, we don't use the velocities because the velocities tend to be big numbers. And we just use the indices of refraction to um, characterize or to describe the optical properties of each of those materials. And also when we use Snell's law, we usually don't leave it in this form. We write it in this form, and you can see we have N1 and theta1, so we want to make sure we keep those two things together, so to speak. And then we have N2 and theta2, we want to keep those two together. So whatever the angle and whatever the index of refraction, those have to be together on one side, and the other two are together on the other side. And once again, usually theta1 and N1 I label on the incident side, and the other side are the two values from the refracted side. Okay. So let's go through and do a couple of problems. We have a ray of light it's traveling through air and it's approaching a boundary with water and it's traveling at an angle or it makes an angle of 55 degrees. Now that angle is actually the angle of incidence and that's the angle with the normal line. And we wanna know what is the angle of refraction, okay? So before I begin, I just like to make a quick, simple drawing or sketch of the situation. Now this I'm doing in Keynote, so it looks nice and neat, but usually I just pick up my pen or my pencil and make a quick sketch, draw my boundary, draw my normal line, label my index of refraction for this side, label my index of refraction for this side, draw the ray coming in, and I try to draw it at approximately the right angle. This looks like it's about 55. I didn't measure this with a protractor. I usually don't measure it with a protractor. I just label it theta one and label 55 degrees. Now then I want to think to myself before I start, I had this light ray, it's coming from a material with a lower index of refraction, crossing this boundary and going into a material with a higher index of refraction, and I want to know what is the angle of refraction. So I want to know, think a little bit ahead of time, is the angle going to be greater or less than 55 degrees? And I know when light goes from a lower to a higher index of refraction, it's going to bend towards the normal line. So I'm actually just going to draw it like this, and that tells me that the angle of refraction better be less than the angle of incidence, and that tells me that I'm solving for this angle. And when I get my value, this angle for the angle of refraction, it better be less than 55 degrees. And here's the equation I'm going to use, Snell's Law. Now we're solving for not just theta two, but the sine of theta two. There's basically four terms here. One, the second term is the sine of theta one, and then N two is the third term, and sine of theta two is the fourth term. You can see we've been given three things. This is N1 and N2, and this is the angle, the sine of the angle we're gonna use. And we basically wanna get theta two, but we have to get the sine of theta two first. So we're gonna solve for the sine of theta two. And we know that that is N1 times theta one divided by N2. Just divide both sides by N2. Now I can plug my values in. One times the sine of 55 degrees divided by 1.33, and I get that the sine of theta two is equal to 0.615. This is not the angle. You notice this is the sine of the angle. If you know anything about your trig functions, every angle has a particular sine, cosine, and tangent, and all those things. But this angle has this angle has a sine of 0.615. So you have to use that inverse sine key or sometimes you have to push the second function sine to the minus one, raise the power of minus one, and then put this value in. And if you do that, you'll get that the angle is 38 degrees. So the angle 38 degrees has the sine of, has a sine of 0 0.615. And you need to be able to convert from the sine 
to the angle using your calculator. Now you'll notice this is 38 degrees. 38 degrees is less than 55 degrees, and we said our answer has to be less than 55. So that makes us feel like we probably did that right because we did get an angle that's less than 55 degrees. When light goes from a material with a high, lower index of refraction to a higher index of refraction, it's going to bend towards the normal line, and the angle of refraction has to be less than the angle of incidence. Okay? All right, let's try one more. Okay, this we have a light rays traveling through a material. It's an unknown material, and it's striking a boundary with water. So on one side, we have an unknown material. On the other side, we have water. The angle of incidence is 34 degrees. The angle of refraction is 48 degrees. We want to know what is the index of refraction for this unknown material. So once again, I like to draw it like this. I draw my normal line, draw my boundary, put up here my angle of incidence is 34 draw my uh, angle of refraction is 48. Now once again I don't measure this, I'm just making a quick sketch so I can get an idea about what it looks like and helps me figure out what my answer should be approximately. I get N2 is 133 and I want to know what N1 is. And once again I know that when light goes from a, when light goes from a material with a higher index of refraction to a material with a lower index of refraction it's going to bend away from the normal line. So my angle of incidence, excuse me, I like to think of it this way, my angle of refraction is greater than my angle of incidence. So therefore I know that N1 better be more than 1.33 because when it goes from a higher, so let's just say for example this is 2, to a lower this is 1.33, we know it's going to bend away from the normal line. So when I calculate N1, I know that N1 better be greater than N2. We're going to do this with Snell's Law again. We're solving for N1. N1 is equal to N2 sine theta 2 divided by the sine of theta 1. I can plug my values in. N2 is 133. The angle I've given is 48 degrees. And I'm going to divide that by the sine of 34 degrees. So this is 1.33 times the sine of 48 divided by the sine of 34 and I come up with N1 is equal to 1.77. So if I put 1.77 in here then that tells me when light goes from a material with a higher index of refraction to a material with a lower index of refraction it bends away from the normal line. That's what's occurring and we said earlier that N1 better be greater than N2 and indeed it is so that helps me to feel that I did that properly. Okay, so that is how to use Snell's law to calculate either the angles or the indices of refraction. If you were to calculate uh, the other values, you would just use Snell's law again, and it's the same process. So I think if you write down your equation, rearrange the equation, plug the values in, get your answer, I think you'll be successful if you follow those steps. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up in the section below or leave me a comment below also. Thank you very much.